The area surrounding sample 15415 is generally of higher albedo than most of Spur Crater's northern rim. Dust coating on fragments in the vicinity of sample 15415 appears to be greater than that at the nearby sampling site of sample 15445. Sample 15415, the first pristine sample collected of the primitive lunar crust, is a very high albedo plagioclase rich rock plucked from the lunar top of a much lower albedo, poorly consolidated breccia on the northern rim crest of Spur Crater. The sample was described by the crew as exotic to the local area by virtue of the shiny high albedo plagioclase content and the common sample me position on top of sample 15435. Sample 15415 was described as being easily lifted off with tongs and therefore poorly attached to sample 15431 to 15437. Sample 15415 has undergone at least two fragmentation events one before incorporation into the breccia and one that produced the fragments of breccia containing 15415. It was then relithified into its current brecciated state. Observation suggests a rather complex history, probably associated with cratering, which decreases the probability that 15415 is indigenous to the bedrock in the immediate vicinity of Spur Crater. Yeah, I think we could probably do a rake right here, Joe. Okay, Later, sounds like a good place, man. down in front of us, so I'm sure you can see. Yeah, there, there's a boulder down in front of us, I'm sure you can see, Joe, which is gray, and it has uh, some very outstanding gray class and white class, and oh boy, it's a beaut. And we're going to get a hold of that one in a minute. Okay, I have my pictures, Dave. This rock, sample 15415, will later be coined as the Genesis Rock. Okay, let's see. What do you think the best way to sample it would be? I think I'm partly, uh, could we break off a piece of the clod underneath it? Or, or I guess you could probably lift that top fragment right off. Yeah, let's, let me try. Yeah. Sure can. And it's uh, a white class. And it's about. Oh, oh man, I got. Look at that. Look at the glint. Oh. Ah. Almost see twinning in there. Guess what we just found? Guess what we just found? I think we found what we came for. Crystal and rock, huh? Yes, sir. You better believe it. Yep, Put sir. Put your in there. Yeah. Almost all pledge. She likes it. As a matter of fact, <laughs> oh boy, I think we might have ourselves uh, something close to uh, the north of site. Because it's crystalline and there's just a bunch of just almost all pledge. What a beaut. That is really a beauty. And uh, there's, uh, there's another one down there. Yeah, we'll get some of these. Bag it up. Ah. Ha! Ah, beautiful. Hey, let me get some of that clod there. No, let's don't mix them. Let's make this a special one. I'll zip it up. Okay. Make this bag number 196 a special bag. Yes, sir. It's our first one. Don't lose your bag now, Jim. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, now let's get some of the other, maybe... Uh, let me take a picture first here. The Genesis rock is almost purely composed of the mineral anorthite, or calcium plagioclase. The rock is thought to be in excess of four billion years old, making it one of the oldest rocks we've found on the moon. Let me do that again. The rock is thought to be in excess of four billion years old making it one of the oldest rocks we found on the moon. Likely part of the moon's original crust, the Genesis rock's pristine nature suggests it was not affected by many impacts. Although it's mildly altered anorthite indicates some shock metamorphism occurred. 
Ongoing studies are devising ways to attain a more precise age of the rock. I got it, no sweat. Jim takes an aftershot of the rock's location. 